Good morning, Malta and Goza, and welcome to another episode of Love and Daily. I'm your host, Chris Perejean, joined today by Sam Vassalo. How are you, Sam? Very good. Um, and these are the stories that we'll be discussing today. So yesterday we had a lot of controversy over a party, an illegal party that was held, uh, and two people who are sort of influencers in uh, Malta's uh, youth uh, apologized for attending this, par this party. We'll talk a bit more about what happened there. Um, the police are investigating claims that the Maxar brothers, who are allegedly the suppliers of the bomb uh, in the murder of Daphne Caruana Galizia, had moles in the police force and in the Malta security services. Uh, there's been outrage after a grisly discovery of mutilated shark heads were found in Meliha. Uh, football parents, parents of uh, kids who play football, have raised concerns that the ban on sports is seriously affecting the mental health of children. Uh, and yesterday we also heard that Malta will be setting up a grove in memory of the many COVID-19 victims. So, Sam, you want to kick us off with the, with the first story, this I party? Do. So here's a public service announcement. Don't do things that are illegal, but maybe if you're going to do them, don't take videos of them. <laughs> so. Essentially, probably the biggest story of yesterday, um, footage emerged of a full-blown party in clear breach of COVID-19 regulations, clearly more than you know, two households meeting up at a time, um, complete with a fireworks show and some uh, of Moda's uh, young influencers, particularly from uh, Clubhouse. So there was you know, Zach Gregg, who co-founded Clubhouse. Now, for anyone who doesn't know what Clubhouse is, don't worry, I, I found out recently as well. Clubhouse is basically uh, a villa. Uh, in a clean where young people take these uh, viral videos. So, you know, there was Zach Gregg, there was Joao Coronel, who's this um, Brazilian influencer who recently joined uh, Clubhouse. There was also DJ Ant and other familiar faces. Now, of course, this sparked major outrage online and prompted them all to apologize, um, you know, for their actions. Now, no one has actually owned up to, to uh, saying that they organized the party. It was confirmed that it wasn't held at the premises of Clubhouse. Um, and police are investigating, uh, you know, where this actually took place and who was actually involved. And uh, yeah, maybe, you know, we all just need to stick it together for the last bit and partying is just around the corner. Yeah, and we'll move on to the next story where <coughs> um, the police are investigating where uh, there have been moles and informants in the police force and the Malta Security Service uh, for the Maxar brothers. Now, the Maxar brothers, as we know, uh, are currently in jail, uh, having been charged with supplying the bomb uh, in the Daphne Caruana Galizia murder and also uh, related to, to another murder of Carmel Kirkop, um, uh, a lawyer who was killed several years ago. Um, they, their father was also killed in 2008, and that sparked, uh, triggered a whole spate of mafia-style killings, uh, which we've seen in the in a number of years uh, that that passed. Um, what we what we know is that uh, the, there have been these, uh, there has been some evidence of them seeking to recruit um, informants in the police force and the motor security services. Uh, the, the, the indications are that they are likely to have been successful when it comes to the police force, not so much with the MSS that's still being uh, looked into. Uh, their phones are probably the, the, the key to, to, this, to unraveling this data, but they have not yet been analyzed by Europol, so we'll wait to see more um, as, as that develops. Uh, obviously, the police force has been under major scrutiny in, in terms of leaks and, and, and informing uh, keeping criminals informed, uh, especially in this case and even in others. Um, so we, we've had, you know, Lawrence Kutayar uh, being scrutinized on this point, Silvia Valletta, others. So, um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully we'll, we'll learn what, what really went on on, on on this case as well. Indeed, couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, moving on to our next story, a grisly a discovery in Meliha yesterday. So, um, you know, imagine you're walking through the fields, the little um, greenery we have in Malta, and suddenly there's a horrendous stench. You think maybe it's a dead cat, maybe it's a bit of litter, possibly, but no, it is two shark heads. So, essentially, that's exactly what happened yesterday uh, when um, biologist Arnold Shiberas was walking through Meliha and saw these two shark heads of 
they are six skill shocks. They were just lying in a field. He suspects that um, you know they were probably discarded and the meat was sold uh, in disguise as some other form of meat. Now, sharks in Malta are a protected species, so this is very concerning. It's even more concerning that they might have been you know sold as a different kind of meat. And you know, in in very uh, Maltese fashion, you know, we have something beautiful happening just a few days ago when, when we spotted uh, whales and now we have some uh, sea species with the heads cut off in our fields. <laughs> so, so strange, eh? Like, where the hell did they? Um, okay, so we'll move on to the next story, which is uh, the, the parents of football players in, in, in Malta are very concerned that their children are suffering um, the mental effects of not being able to play sports. So they've, they've uh, issued a, a press release where they're saying there's been a significant change in behavior and in the attitudes of their children. Sports is something that gives them self-esteem, self-respect and dignity. And without the ability to play or organize sports, they are suffering the, the, the brunt of that. I imagine both the children and their parents who have to, who have to deal with this. Um, they're, they're arguing that uh, sports should be reopened uh, w alongside schools um, and, and they're using the, the data that was released uh, recently that uh, sport transmission in sports is actually quite low. Transmission of COVID-19 in sports is actually quite low compared to the transmission in households and social gatherings and, um, and in schools even. Uh, as we know, schools are going to be slowly reopening from Monday and uh, on the 26th of April we expect um, non-essential shops to start opening as well. But so far there's been no indication about, school, uh, about sports and, and, and the rollout of, of sports. Some parents are fearing that you know, children are going to have spent six months not playing sports and, and this is going to be, you know, for those who uh, make a career of, of, of the, the, the sports, then this is going to be a real setback that they cannot really get back. What do you, what do you think of this, Sam? I, I think we're really underappreciating, you know, what sports actually means to everyone. I mean, we, we've heard time and time again how important it is for you to play sports, not just as, you know, a hobby. I mean, I mean, this essentially it affects everyone, whether you're a top athlete or whether you're a kid, you know, uh, discovering which sports you like as you start school. You know, ob obesity, obesity is a huge issue in Malta, as we, as we know, and um, mental health and, uh, and the deterioration of mental health during the pandemic is actually being dubbed the second pandemic. And this is a clear solution or at least um, something that can help uh, mitigate these issues and yet it is being kept on the back burner. So hopefully, uh, you know, pressure, pressure is rallied up so that, that uh, sports can be played again. On to our last story. So Malta's health minister, Chris Fern, has unveiled that COVID-19 victims will be commemorated with a grove. It seems that we're, you know, throwing trees at everything nowadays, you know, this comes just as Aaron Faruja and, and PN announced that they're going to be giving out uh, free seeds, you know, <laughs> at this, this funny seed war. Um, but it is actually a very, a very uh, nice and sombering gesture. So Malta unfortunately hit a grim milestone recently with 401 COVID-19 deaths. But thankfully, you know, with the restrictions currently, um, our active cases have gone down and uh, daily cases have remained in the double digits. In fact, yesterday Malta registered 55 new COVID-19 cases and 45 recoveries. You know, our vaccination program is well underway. All we have to do is remain vigilant, be patient and a sense of normality is hopefully around the corner. This That's all from us. Oh, you want to say something no, else? No, I was just saying like this is the sort of uh, flip side of what we're saying before with sports, right? The, exactly. The the restrictions have actually worked, you know, and and um, and they've been, you know, the the, the advice being given, um, I guess, from the health authorities, you know, is about minimizing risk and finding things that can be that can be sort of stopped or, or, or managed a bit better, you know, and and this is the balance we're all, I guess, trying to to achieve. Exactly. So parties <laughs> are just around the corner. Let's just stay in it together. That's all from us here on Lovin Daily and have a day full of lovin.